Let me thank an incredibly impressive panel, and I want to particularly thank uh, Leah and Evelyn, because it's, it's courageous to tell these stories uh, in public on the record, and, but it's extraordinarily powerful. And you're helping the lives of other individuals, because when we talk about issues here, sometimes we talk about it in a way that we don't get the human face to the challenges that we are facing, and in this case, modern-day slavery, and in other cases, about education or income or whatnot. But, so I want to thank you both, because I think it's incredibly powerful, and I applaud you for doing it. Um, and to Mrs. McCain for your work at the McCain Institute is just fantastic, uh, and I appreciate uh, your insights and your commitment, and to Mr. Middleberg, a fantastic organization that's doing and changing lives. Um, when I worked with Senator Cork originally on this and, and, and uh, certainly uh, uh, felt his passion and believe in it myself and then Senator Cardin, uh, I think about the committee's jurisdiction and, and while I'm pleased to hear of many of the domestic things we need to do, including realizing that it's not just about issues abroad in terms of modern day slavery, that domestically we have to face up to our moral responsibility to meet this challenge. But in terms of the committee's jurisdiction, it is foreign uh, uh, relations. And as part of that, uh, I'd like to try to pick your brains. I've gotten the sense of the conversation uh, before I got to walk in, because I was at another meeting. Uh, but how do we use the tools of foreign diplomacy in a way that can more powerfully direct the attention of other countries uh, to the issue of modern-day slavery. Uh, and for example, be, before I hear your answers, uh, I appreciate Senator Cardin working uh, to make sure that the TIP report, which I think is one of the most powerful tools we have to cast not only a spotlight, but to have countries meet uh, their responsibilities, needs to be inviolate. Uh, and I and concerned that the last one wasn't. Uh, that considerations, and I understand, I, I've been on either the House or Senate Foreign Relations Committee for 24 years, so I understand the totality of issues that we face in relationships in the world. But you cannot uh, ultimately mitigate uh, the um, challenges in a country on modern day uh, human trafficking and slavery uh, because other things are far more important. You can maybe meet them in tandem, but you shouldn't ultimately mitigate them. And I'm, I'm concerned when I see Malaysia, for example. Uh, there's no way that anybody's going to convince me that they deserve to be upgraded. Now, maybe that was a result of my amendment that passed in the Senate Finance Committee that includes in the question of trade promotion and TPP you know, having a, 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 a prohibition on dealing with countries who are in tier three to get access to fast track and trade. And I'd like to hear whether that, or elements of that, whether using our trade agenda, particularly with countries that rate among the worst in the world in terms of human trafficking, is one tool of foreign diplomacy that we should use. Um, so I, I'd like to get a sense from you uh, what can we do uh, in our arsenal of foreign diplomacy tools to help uh, your work and to our joint commitment uh, to end modern day slavery? I, I think there are more powerful efforts to uh, use um, the use of our aid and our trade uh, as well as international opinion, which the TIP report certainly is a part of, to achieve that, but you're out there doing this, so I'd, I'd like to hear from you. Uh, thank you, Senator Menendez, and thank you for being so deeply engaged on, on this issue for, issue for which we're, we're very grateful. Um, l let me suggest sort of an, of an agenda of, of tools or methods, uh, one of which you've shown great leadership on. I think it is very important that we leverage access to U.S. markets. Uh, it's simply unconscionable that we would allow slave-made goods into the United States of America. I can't imagine why anybody could, could possibly countenance that. And it seems to me in part that involves dialogue with our leading businesses so that they really begin to pay attention to their supply chains. You know, the, the statement is made that, well, the supply chains are enormously complex. 
Uh, I happened to listen to uh, somebody who once was chief of procurement for Exxon Mobil, and she said, we knew where every screw and every flange came from because if we didn't and the oil well blew up, uh, that was going to be a serious problem and cost us money. So I think part of this is what are the incentives that are on the table in terms of whether or not the businesses feel that they really need to pay attention to their supply chain. So I think really thinking carefully about leveraging access to U.S. markets both for the producers and for the consumers uh, on this end is, is potentially a very powerful uh, tool. Second, the role that we uh, play with regard to the array of international institutions, particularly the international financial institutions, those are very important sources of financing for many countries. Uh, and, and that can be, if that was systematically integrated into the dialogue uh, between the international financial institution and the country that's receiving uh, the money. We certainly have done so with other issues, the environment, women's rights, and so forth. I can't imagine why we wouldn't begin to include slavery as one of those conditionalities that we really think about in terms of the, the dialogue, in terms of our being on boards or being at leadership roles in international financial institutions. I mean, ask the president of the World Bank, what's your stance on slavery? What is the World Bank actually doing on this? You're the largest development bank in the world by far. Uh, that's probably a, a useful conversation. Um, the, the consistency of high-level diplomacy. Uh, you know, we talked about it before. When the president is, is talking to a foreign leader where there's an issue, is slavery on the agenda? Because the fact that it's not on the agenda is also a signal that we don't care. Uh, so it, that needs to be consistently on the agenda. Uh, I, I would ask this committee to pay careful attention to the actual implementation of the USAID CTIP policy. There's a policy on paper. Is it actually being implemented? Are they reporting on what they're actually doing in that regard? Uh, is the TIP office, uh, is it in a structure, in a culture, in an environment where it's allowed to do its job? And so the products it produces are unimpeachable. So I think there, there are, in a way, people do pay attention to that TIP report. Um, it, you know, that's certainly been our experience. So being sure that that is not swayed by non by con issues other than whether or not the country's making progress on slavery is, is really critical. So those are some things I would suggest, sir. Mr. McCain. I completely agree with what Mr. Middleberg just said because uh, what has happened in some cases is, is uh, it's made the TIP report meaningless. Uh, in, especially with what happened re most recently. Um, in my opinion, of course, putting it on, on the discussion table at every high-level meeting, at, at everything you all do, because we rely on you to, to carry the, the U.S. message around the world. I would love to be a fly on the wall, Senator Cardin, at the next meeting you have, talking to a world leader. I, that would just be great entertainment for me. I'd love it. Um, but, but those kinds of, my point being, those kinds of very frank discussions are necessary because all too often the people that are meeting with you are also making money off these slaves. So uh, it, it's, it, it, we have to be tough on this because we're talking about children and and the lives of human beings. And unless we are, it's like good parenting, unless we are consistent and firm, we're not gonna get anywhere and that starts at home. Well, I appreciate your answers and I, uh, I think they're all important. I very much am interested in the international financial institutions. For example, we have corruption initiatives uh, uh, as part of it. There isn't any reason this couldn't be included. So I will uh, raise those with some of the leaders. And, and the supply chain question, I think is also very important. Uh, if you can uh, know everything you need to know to mitigate uh, any tort claim, you should be able to do know everything to mitigate any claim on human trafficking. So thank you very much.